Hi everyone, so the other day Steven Crowder attempted to debunk some of the so-called environmental and ethical benefits of veganism, and of course he tried to cite scientific sources. Well, before we get into that video, I think you need to uh, know a little bit about Steven Crowder's past and uh, his analysis of scientific evidence. So back in 2017, Crowder made a video about how he feels too much money has been given to AIDS research because by his estimations, heterosexuals have a very low likelihood of contracting HIV in the first place. Uh, and in his own words, even though the chances of contracting it short of anal sex with gay strangers while shooting heroin was statistically non-existent. Matter of fact, the chances of a straight person contracting HIV in the modern world is 4 in 10,000 per exposure. Meaning that if a man were even married to an HIV-infected bride, he'd have to engage in intercourse with her on average of 10,000 separate occasions to expose himself to contracting AIDS. And of course, this is complete bull. Steven Crowder just misread the research he was citing. So Crowder got these numbers from this paper titled Estimating Per Act HIV Transmission Risk, A Systematic Review. And if you read Table 1, they do indeed report that men having heterosexual intercourse run the risk of contracting HIV four times per 10,000 exposures to an infected source. This risk is only for men, by the way. Women have twice the risk. But what Crowder didn't mention, probably because he didn't even read the paper, was that these estimates only represent the asymptomatic phase of HIV infection and do not account for various other factors that can affect infectivity. And if you scroll down to Table 2, cofactors such as high plasma viral load can increase transmission risk by nearly three times, and acute versus asymptomatic stage of the disease can increase transmission risk by over seven times. And this has a very wide confidence interval. It's uh, possible that if a person is in the acute stage of the disease, they could have a 17 times greater risk of transmitting the disease. So Crowder's claim that it's virtually impossible for a straight person to contract HIV is just plain false. It's stupid. He didn't even read the study he cited. And according to the Center for Disease Control, heterosexual contact is responsible for 24% or over 9,000 new HIV diagnoses in 2017. So. Imagine how stupid Steven Crowder would have to be to say, Hey dad, my girlfriend's passed out drunk in the other room. You got any condoms? Condoms? What are you, gay? So I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible, but I would say Steven Crowder is very special. He's not a reliable source of information, and you should question absolutely everything he says. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to go through his video criticizing uh, some of these vegan environmental and ethical claims and see if his claims hold up under scrutiny. Yes. Reason one, sustainability. A lot of people, I talked about this with uh, Lee R. Keith a long time ago. Hmm. Topsoil erosion. Yeah. So, uh, omniv uh, do we say omnivorous? Is that omnivorous? Yes. Omnivorous. Yeah. Yes. Omnivorous. Uh, omnivorous farming is, is actually a lot more sustainable than the vegan model. So right. globally, we have. I want to make sure I get this right. Twenty-five to forty billion tons of topsoil are lost every year to erosion mainly due to plowing, intense cropping. Yeah. So Crowder's first argument against veganism is that uh, vegan farming, quote unquote, is bad for the environment due to soil erosion. He was suggesting that farming for crops erodes the soil far more than farming for animal-based foods. Uh, his first source was the FAO. I do consider the FAO to be a valid source. But then he later referred to Farmers Weekly and The Guardian. I don't consider uh, either of those sources to be reliable. So we're just going to look at his FAO source here. Soils are endangered, but the degradation can be rolled back. Erosion carries away 25 to 40 billion tons of topsoil every year, significantly reducing crop yields and the soil's ability to store and cycle carbon, nutrients, and water, as stated by the FAO. And I think Stephen Crowder did something really dishonest here. Rather than continuing to read on in this FAO article and see what they would recommend to do to prevent soil erosion or to restore soils, 
he just referenced an entirely different source that is not nearly as reputable, like The Guardian, uh, and he did this to, you know, support this claim that, oh look, crops are really bad for soil erosion. Well, the FAO has multiple articles on preventing and reversing soil erosion and degradation. I'd recommend reading this article titled, Agroecology to Reverse Soil Degradation and Achieve Food Security. In this article, they recommend polyculture and agroforestry systems in place of monoculture cultures, which help to put back nutrients into the soil and reduce soil erosion, and they also recommend the use of cover crops, which again helps to add nutrients back into the soil and reverse soil degradation. The FAO also linked an article by the International Center of Tropical Agriculture that discussed soil restoration in Ethiopia, and just by changing their water management system, they were able to reduce soil erosion, reverse soil degradation, and increase crop production. Action. So Steven Crowder is lying by omission. He's claiming that the only way to prevent or reverse soil erosion or degradation is by the use of animal agriculture when his own sources that he linked, the FAO, completely debunk his claim. I just showed you three different methods in which soil erosion or degradation can be reversed without the use of animal agriculture. So Steven Crowder just found a bunch of sources and cherry-picked portions of these sources that fit with his agenda that, oh, we need to eat meat, we need animal agriculture, when his own sources refute that claim. And he does this all the time. He has a consistent history of doing this. I've already shown you his bull video on HIV. He just cherry picks whatever sources he wants that will suit his agenda, and he'll just lie by omission. 20, especially certain uh, uh, grains like wheat, yeah. uh, I don't know if it's corn, I think we have a source, mm -hmm. results in 25 times more sentient animals wow. being killed per kilogram of usable protein. There's more environmental damage, there's more animal That's cruelty insane. than farming red meat. And, and once again, Crowder is cherry picking and misrepresenting sources of evidence. So in this article he linked, uh, it was from The Conversation, which is not a scientific source, it's just a mainstream media outlet. Uh, they claim that in Australia, producing wheat and other grains results in at least 25 times more sentient animals being killed per kilogram of usable protein. So obviously this is an unfair comparison because wheat doesn't have nearly as much protein as beef. Why would you make a comparison like this when these foods have vastly different macronutrient breakdowns? What would make sense is comparing how many animals have to die to produce a certain number of calories. And if you take a look at the number of animals killed to produce 1 million calories in eight food groups, grains are the best. Grains actually cause the least amount of animal deaths per calorie, and this is largely due to land use. So for example, oh, wow. McDonald's, they used to use tallow for fries. After lobbying from vegetarians to the USDA, they switched to hydrogenated vegetable oils because it was healthier, mm. right? A lot of people don't, it started off with the agenda though, they wanted to get more Americans on a vegetarian diet. The same thing for the vilification of eggs, dietary cholesterol, saturated oh, yeah. fat. A lot of people want to act like it was just General Mills, right? It was their fault, or it was the Kellogg's, but the reason a lot of uh, misinformation regarding dietary cholesterol and the saturated fat was because of the vegetarian lobby and their agenda above truth, and they're doing the same thing now. So now Steven Crowder has resorted to coming up with uh, insane conspiracy theories that he has no evidence for, by the way. Uh, so he's suggesting that there is a vegetarian lobbying group that has enough power, money, and influence to uh, force government institutions and uh, major nutritional organizations to lie, uh, you know, trick the public and come out, come out with bad research, uh, creating this myth around uh, how bad cholesterol and saturated fat is. Uh, well, Crowder, uh, again, you provided no evidence for this claim, so I don't think I have to go through the effort in debunking this because you have not met the burden of proof. So I think I've spent enough time uh, just showing all of you that Crowder is a liar. He literally just makes up bull and he cherry picks different sources of information with varying levels of credibility to uh, convince you of his bull when uh, if you, you know, take a deep dive into the evidence he provides, his claims are completely false.
So, uh, Crowder, if you'd ever like to debate me on any of these topics, we can debate environmentalism, we can debate soil, the vegan diet, how it affects the environment, uh, we can debate some of your ethical claims, we can also debate some of the health claims you made at the end of this video. I'd be more than happy to publicly show to everyone on, uh, on a live stream that you have no idea of what you're talking about and you're a liar. I'd be more than happy to do that. So you can get into contact with me through Twitter, uh, or you can message me on my business email, businessvegangains at gmail.com. I really doubt Steven Crowder would ever agree to debate me, though, because he knows he'd lose. He has a tendency of avoiding getting into debates that he knows he'd lose. Uh, he's avoided getting into a debate with Sam Cedar from the Majority Report for quite a long time now. I mean, look, it You're does done. appear that Steven Crowder is pretending like he's not aware of this, and I know that he is aware of this. Crowder tweeted about no one wanted to debate him two days ago. All replies told him to debate Sam. <laughs> Crowder's subreddit is even questioning him, talk about leaving his mug club if he keeps dodging. It's tweet at Steven. You can tweet at both of us. Uh, and say it's time for a debate. So again, the debate offer is totally open. If Steven wants to debate me anytime, I'm totally free. I'd be more than happy to, but I doubt he'll accept my debate invitation because he knows he'll lose, and he'll probably just uh, avoid and dodge debate with me, just like how he dodges uh, debating Sam Cedar. But if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and 